let me get started. So I wrote down a brief recap of some things we did last time. So uh, K will be an eighth field with asymptotic integration. Uh, C denotes the constant fields of capital K and capital gamma is the value group for the natural valuation, right? where the valuation ring is the convex hull of the constant field. Um, and then we consider a differential polynomial capital P in the indeterminate Y. And uh, for active, for a positive active element of, of K, uh, we then have the, uh, we change the derivation by, uh, of K by multiplying by one over phi in front. And that gives you uh, K superscript phi. Um, so it's the same underlying field, but with a different derivation in general. And um, active comes down to, the, to that um, means that K phi uh, is again an eighth field. Yeah, active and positive implies that K phi is again an eighth field with asymptotic integration, but now also uh, guaranteed to have small derivation. <clears throat> and uh, this means that you can um, form the dominant part uh, of um, P phi y, right? By first factoring out a coefficient of lowest valuation, that means of highest biggest, the, the dominant um, monomial, so to say, or oh, sorry, the dominant uh, coefficient. And then um, uh, once you have factored that out, you can pass to the constant field and um, you get the dominant part of your differential polynomial. <clears throat> um, and then a very, uh, a uh, nice fact happens that if you let the valuation of phi increase more and more, but keeping it active, uh, eventually this dominant part stabilizes and uh, it stabilizes to a fixed differential polynomial, which we call n sub p, which is we call the Newton polynomial. Yeah, the terminology Newton is simply because a lot of this depends on considering certain Newton diagrams um, so to say ultimate Newton diagrams because they vary with phi, but ultimately that, uh, okay. Now the important thing here is that um, the reason for considering this Newton polynomial is that it describes more or less how when you plug in for, for the variable Y an element asymptotic to one, then it uh, describes more or less how this py behaves, uh, not only for y and k, as I said last time, but even for y in h field extensions of k. And that is also, I should have said that last time, but I didn't. Um, then we have the definition of Newtonian, which is that um, every uh, differential polynomial such that the Newton degree which means the degree of the Newton polynomial is one, uh, must have a zero, a bounded zero um, in, in capital K. Yeah? Uh, uh, and another thing that I should have said last time is that this, is, this, is a, this can be expressed by uh, sentences in the language of um, ordered um, differential fields. <clears throat> Right, um, it's a first order property in logical terminology, and that is uh, also uh, important for uh, the rest. <clears throat> um, right, so, and then the one theorem that I mentioned already is that uh, omega freeness of K <clears throat> is equivalent to this Newton polynomial having a very special form uh, for every P. Namely, it's an ordinary polynomial in Y times the power of Y prime. And so no higher derivatives show up, which is certainly a remarkable fact. Um, and uh, you can imagine that this is very useful. Um, 
Okay, so now I, I start with the new things. Um, and so I want to mention two other theorems that are um, uh, important in the general story. And all, and these, yeah, several theorems I'm going to mention now are from the book and I'm, and they take, well, they take a lot of work to, to prove, but, um, um, so here they are, that's theorem two. Um, then assume again, um, it seems that Newtonian is mostly useful in combination with omega three. Without omega three, I'm not sure we know much uh, about Newtonianity. But assume k omega three, and um, uh, yeah, k Newtonian is equivalent to. Um, it has no proper immediate, it has no proper immediate D algebraic H field extended. H field extended. Um, yeah, um, I should say. Um, so in, in our book, um, some of these results that I'm going to mention were proved under the extra assumption that the value group is divisible, right? And since we are often dealing only with real closed H fields, <clears throat> that assumption that it's divisible is, uh, is uh, usually satisfied. But Nigel uh, Pincoats uh, showed how you can remove the divisibility assumption from these theorems. So uh, I'm just going to state them in that form without the visibility. It's shorter. And uh, <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> right. Maybe I should make a few. Uh, aha, D algebraic. I'm not sure I've used this. This means it's simply an abbreviation for differentially algebraic. Yeah? Differentially algebraic. We often use the, the letter D simply as an abbreviation for differentially. Um, and um, um, immediate uh, refers to um, to the value to the um, to the valuation, namely um, if you have a it, it means that a constant field doesn't change and um, the value group also doesn't change. Um, so that is what immediate uh, means. And so there cannot be right. If you are familiar with um, ordinary valuation theory, <clears throat> then um, Newtonian behaves much like Hanzelian, right? Uh, for a Hanzelian uh, valued field, it, um, it is the case that you have no immediate um, <clears throat> Algebraic. Um, wait, yeah, uh, well, let me think for a moment. At least an equal characteristic zero to be on the safe side. For a Hanzelian valued field, you, can, you cannot have any algebraic immediate valued field extension. <clears throat> and so this is a kind of H field version of it, where instead of algebraic, you have D algebraic. And uh, right. <clears throat> okay. Um, so that's one uh, important uh, result. Um, and then theorem three. Um, well, it's kind of an analog of the fact that in ordinary valued fields, every valued field has a Henselization. It's sort of a minimal extension, valued field extension that is Hanzelian. Likewise, here we have a, a Newtonization. So um, again, under the assumption that K is omega three uh, implies K 
A has a Newtonization um, <clears throat> IE that is a Newton a Newtonian H field extension H field extension. <clears throat> that and that's yeah as an ordered differential field that and that's into every newtonian into every that's um let me say over k yeah that means uh, the embedding should be the identity on k and that's over k into any every um, Newtonian H-field extension. So this is very much analogous to the property of the Henselization in, uh, in uh, for valued fields. Uh, and to say a bit more, <coughs> um, as, a Newton, as Newtonization, Let's call it K newt. Moreover, this is unique up to isomorphism over K. And it's a D algebraic immediate extension of K. Yeah, and such, yeah, such K newt is, um, is uh, unique up to isomorphism over k yeah, it, so it's a bit like like an algebraic closure of a field which is also unique up to isomorphism or a real closure of a hensualization um, <clears throat> unique up to isomorphism over k and is an immediate the algebraic the algebraic extension. Yeah. In other words, you can get it by from K by just solving repeatedly uh, algebraic differential equations. Um, the algebraic extension of K. Yeah. Okay. Um, any, any, yes? Ah, uh, good question. It's, um, it's unique up to isomorphism, but not unique up to unique isomorphism. <laughs> Unlike the Henselization, for example, or the real closure of an ordered field, which are unique up to a unique isomorphism, this is only unique up to some isomorphism. There may be several, um, in other words, there can be non-trivial automorphisms of the Newtonization of K over K. You're right, that's, uh, that's, that's a difference with, the, with, um, with, for example, real closures of ordered fields or hensualization of valued fields there, which, which, are, which have a stronger uniqueness property, namely that uh, that is that they are unique up to a unique isomorphism, right? <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So maybe, of course, uh, yeah. Maybe a diagram here would be useful. Uh, so here you have K. Here you have the Newtonization. And uh, if you have any Newt Newtonian extension, you can always embed it in there and um, yeah it's also minimal i mean there is no over k in the sense that there is no intermediate h field extension um, that is newtonian uh, well except of course k newt itself <coughs> um, right <coughs> um, yeah now um,
yeah uh, before i continue um yeah so this omega-3 plus newtonian is of course uh, now very powerful um but it was all uh, we only observed later observe, we observed later after the book was already published um later that um at least for leoville closed leoville closed yeah uh, k yeah. that means um, everything has every element has an antiderivative in k and um, <clears throat> um, and also an anti-logarithmic derivative in k uh, for and it's real closed that's what you will um, the following holds omega three plus Newtonian, which is really is equivalent to uh, the differential in intermediate value property. Yeah, the differential in intermediate value property, which I mentioned, I think, in my um, workshop talk, uh, meaning that if you have a differential polynomial, <coughs> which is somewhere negative and somewhere positive, then in between, there is, there is a zero. <coughs> in the field um right okay so i mean yeah um okay so these theorems are our key steps these theorems yeah this this doesn't play a role at all in, in our in our book but uh, because we didn't well we hadn't thought about it actually <laughs> it's not very hard actually to um to show this um these theorems are let's say key steps to the to the to what we consider as the main results um towards the main results in our book our book namely that uh, that's called theorem a uh, the theory of omega free newtonian leoville closed h fields is complete the theory of uh, omega free so newtonian yeah all these are that are, all these things that i mentioned here omega free newtonian are first order properties that can be formulated by sentences in the language of uh, ordered valued differential fields Newtonian um, Leoville closed also first order H field is complete um, oh with small derivation I should should not I should add that uh, the theory of omega of Newton is with H field is small derivation. <clears throat> Otherwise, it would not be complete. But if it doesn't have small derivation, then that's another complete theory. <laughs> uh, there are only <clears throat> if small derivation uh, is complete. We call small derivation means that the derivative of an infinitesimal is infinitesimal um, so for those who are uh, not familiar with this logical terminology this means that um, all omega free newtonian leeville closed h fields with small derivation satisfy exactly the same statements that you can formulate in the language of ordered valued uh, differential fields um, <clears throat> They are indistinguishable as far as sentences in their languages language is concerned and well, of course um right <clears throat> and a bit and something that's actually more useful in practice is that it's also model complete and model complete which i'll explain um for those 
we're not familiar with it. All this model theory, of course, is 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 uh, also exposed in the in the book in an appendix B. Um, but um, <clears throat> yeah, and for those, and it's actually the model companion of the uh, theory of uh, eight fields with a. Um, yeah, actually, for model completeness, you don't need small derivation. Already model complete without assuming that. And then it will be the model companion of the theory of edge fields. <clears throat> um, okay, so, and uh, yeah, one more, one remark. Uh, this requires. For completeness, you don't have to be too careful about what exact language you, you take. Um, but for model completeness, you have to be, uh, the language must have symbols for zero, one, minus, plus, times the derivation for the ordering and very crucially for the deriv for the for the valuation, yeah, where we use this symbol, the dominance symbol. Uh, to um, encode the, the valuation. <clears throat> and um, right, if you, although this valuation is definable in terms of the other ones, um, for model completeness, you in, have to include it. For completeness, of course, you don't, but uh, because it's definable in terms of the other ones, but for model completeness, that's, that's, that's a subtle point. And we overlooked that. Um, a few years before the, the book uh, got, before we proved the main results, we had overlooked that and had conjectured model completeness without this, and that was that was simply wrong. It's not. <clears throat> anyway, uh, theorem B. Right, and now, of course, very important that there are a natural model, namely the field of trend series is a model, satisfies all these conditions, is model of the above theory. Right, it is omega free, Newtonian, um, Liouville closed. Well, Liouville closed is, is, is uh, not a fairly basic. Uh, omega free is, um, well, you, not hard either, but Newtonian does require a serious work. Uh, um, right, so good. Um, let's see. Uh, right. So now, after our after our book, we we uh, largely focused on on applying that to Hardy fields. We really wanted to understand very concretely in the uh, for Hardy fields what all this means, or whether these notions actually apply there in any significant way, and they do. Yeah. So uh, now we focus on the case of the case of Hardy fields. Yeah. So Hardy fields that and by adjoining all real numbers you it will automatically be an H field. We focus on the case of Hardy fields. Uh, <clears throat> and um, um, Okay, so H will be, um, let me see. Oh, maybe I, I should say a little bit more about uh, T. Uh, T is a model of, of the above. You, know. um, you might think this is a rather big model, but there is a much smaller one inside T, namely, um, if you just take those elements in T, the field of trend series that are differentially algebraic 
over the reals. You know, it satisfy an algebraic differential equation with coefficients in the reals or even co or coefficients over Q. It doesn't actually matter. Um, <coughs> differentially algebraic over Q or over R is the same thing, <coughs> or even over Rx with X adjoint. It's all the same. If you just take those elements, you get a differential subfield of T, which is also a model of, of the above. And um, <coughs> Um, right. Oh yes, maybe I should also explain model completeness. What it, what, what the problem, what it means for T itself. What does that mean? It means that um, <clears throat> if you have a a model of that theory, like T, and you have a system of algebraic differential equations and inequations, inequalities involving. And the inequalities may also involve uh, the dominance relation, <coughs> uh, strict dominant or ordinary dominance, doesn't matter. If you have such a system of differential equations with coefficients from your uh, model, and it, if it has a solution in a bigger H field, then it must already have a solution in the, in the model that you start with. <coughs> Right, so it is like a, a Neustellensatz, very much like algebraic geometry, where if you have a, an algebraically closed field and you have a system of polynomial equations in any number of variables, and any um, and it has a solution in a bigger field, then it must have a solution already in the in your algebraically closed field. So that is what model completeness basically means. <clears throat> And it has, is related to completeness, but in, in a way that I'm not going to explain. <clears throat> um, okay, so um, so here the uh, um, a natural notion to consider is what I we will call d maximal, which is more general than just maximal. So um, <clears throat> call a Hardy field. Hardy field D maximal if it has no uh, no um, proper D algebraic Hardy field extension no Hardy field Extension, right? Um, in other words, um, if you have um, right. I I I hope this is clear. Uh, and so you get one, starting with the reals, for example. So if, if you um, you, you join a solution of some algebraic differential equation and keep doing that also with coefficients over the new field that you create this way until you have till you can do this anymore and then you are have arrived at a d maximal hardy field and so these are uh, much smaller than maximal hardy fields of course maximal ones are in particular d maximal yeah? so maximal but maximal ones essentially they are objects that can only be shown to exist by Thorne's lemma, right? Uh, it's obvious from Thorne that maximal ones exist, but you don't need Thorne to 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 create the maximal ones, so they are much smaller in general. But nevertheless, they already have all the good properties that you could. Uh, um would expect so from now on from now on h is a hardy field and now i can state um theorem one of the let's say um one of the main results in our uh, unpublished notes our, let's say forthcoming notes and i wish i could say that they are on the archive but they aren't because my 
my co co-authors are reluctant yet we haven't read everything yet um, but this has been fully established there uh, h is d maximal if and only if it uh, contains first of all must contain all the reals right if it's d maximal then uh, since the real number itself satisfies a trivial differential equation uh, y prime is zero it must contain all the reals that for sure <clears throat> um, and it is a model of and it is um aha uh -huh. yeah h closed yeah instead of saying a model of the above we simply say it's a it's an h closed yeah an h closed um h field is simply one that is uh, uh, omega free newtonian and Liouville closed <coughs> it's, it has all the good properties <coughs> um right <coughs> yeah now some of this is fairly uh easy i mean if it's d maximal it certainly has to contain all the reals as i already mentioned it must be leoville closed because uh, if it's not you simply go to the leoville closure and uh, that will still be a d algebraic extension so um so it must be leoville closed um uh, that it is um omega free is is not easy and that is newtonian is really really hard <clears throat> but um right of course remember also that hardy fields automatically have small derivations so you don't have to worry about that uh, issue <clears throat> okay so um let me see so thursday i want to Thursday, I want to give a very brief sketch of uh, of the proof. Very brief sketch of the proof, and um, well, of the of the of the forward, yeah, the. Um, the forward implication the, the backward implication is fairly easy using using these well results from our books let's say uh, it's not exactly easy just from theorems um one two and three i think you need a, one other theorem that i didn't mention but um using facts from the book this is easy using results from the book um, so the forward implication is the one that we are uh, interested in and um, <clears throat> uh, as i mentioned leoville closed is not a problem omega free is a problem but um, it's it's the easier part of the of the implication and so i will actually um, um so let me see where shall i say that uh we'll assume we'll assume that the fact not easy but still much simpler than than the general than the full implication that every it's Hardy field has an omega free extension, differentially algebraic omega free extension. That's also a Hardy field. Uh, every Hardy field has a omega free d algebraic, as of course, algebraic over the one that you start with, uh, d algebraic Hardy field extension. Yeah, not yeah. Again, not easy, but still, we knew that um, four or five years ago already. 
um, and it took us still a few more years to do the full the full theorem <clears throat> okay but i want to do what i want to do in the rest of this of my time which i see i almost have exhausted um, i wanted to make some preliminary observations some preliminary and observations well actually i will only make one because i don't have time for the other but uh, h let h be a hardy uh, let h be a hardy field with asymptotic integration hardy field for example, Liouville closed, then it's automatically having as asymptotic integration on the field with asymptotic integration. Uh, and phi active. Yeah. Then um well then what about you know this construction of going to the compositional conjugate is of course crucial in all this in all all this but you might wonder what what object is this it's its underlying field is the same but its derivation changes and that means that it's not a hardy field anymore well unless phi is, is equals one um because the hardy field comes with its natural derivation and if you change it it's not the natural derivation anymore so hv is not in general a hardy field field anymore but we really have to pass through these things to these things and we have to use um but fortunately it's isomorphic to a hardy field so um so and that that really plays a, uh, an important role um so i want to yeah fortunately and in fact this came up in the in the uh, in the uh, session after afterwards on Thursday, it is isomorphic. Yeah, this what we call compositional conjugation is simply reflecting this terminology reflects the fact that it's kind of a uh, change of variables. Uh, it's isomorphic to a Hardy field, and this is very clear in a Hardy field setting to a Hardy field. Uh, so here we go. Um, um, take take an L uh, in a Hardy field extension. You can always do that with derivative phi Hardy field extension uh, with. Then L will certainly grow um, go to infinity, so it's bigger than all real numbers, and um, and you have the following isomorphism: H phi as an H field, as an ordered differential field, is isomorphic to a Hardy field, namely this one. So uh, L inf is the compositional compositional conjugate compositional inverse sorry compositional inverse of l um right l goes to infinity eventually strictly increasing so it's compositional inverse exists and is also strictly increasing and and then this is a hardy field this is uh, i think when i talked about hardy fields 
and this is in general not a Hardy field, and so the isomorphism is SH fields. And the isomorphism, of course, it sends an element of H uh, to its composition with compositional inverse. Uh, right. And I want to give one very concrete example because typically you want to apply this where phi uh, is um, is um, the valuation of phi is as high as possible so and then you will see what this actually means in practice right um, so example that's what I'll finish with. Um, say uh, H Leoville closed just to guarantee that uh, all these logarithms, iterated logarithms exist in live in H and uh, take then then can take Um, phi is uh, L and dagger is one over L zero, L zero up to L n. Yeah, so L n is the n times iterated logarithm of x, <clears throat> and so then L with the primitive of phi is um, can you can take L equal to um, ln plus one and uh, and then l inf l inf is simply the since this is the n plus one times iterated log this is the n times iterated x okay. and so so then what you see is that the element in the element h in this corresponds to h composed with H composed with L inf equals H, where you plug in X n plus one X. So it's H of e to the e to the e to the X. Um, so what you see is that basically you replace H by a very sped up, speed up. What is the right? verb here sped up speed up version of h sped up okay um that's what happens if you do this do this um right okay so that uh, i'll stop here and we will have a seminar starting at 10 right okay Yeah. Any questions? Hmm? Okay, yeah. Oh. Huh. Where did I put my glasses? Oh, okay. Thanks. Ah, yes.